Hello everyone, Kenton Kovesky from the Rocket Blocks team here. In this mock interview video, we're sitting down with Matthew Wu, who is a product manager at Facebook, focused on the Facebook Marketplace products. And in this particular mock interview video, we're going to be doing a product execution question that specifically has a strong analytics and metrics bent to it. And he's going to be evaluating and thinking about the type of metrics he would want to look at and use to make a decision between using a default vertical feed view versus a grid view of photos for the Instagram home screen. So let's go ahead and see how Matthew addresses this. Okay, so let's imagine you are a PM at Facebook working on Instagram and there is a product change um, under consideration, which would be changing from the default screen and presentation when you open up Instagram and see your feed and just like single image from the different folks in your network in a linear fashion and actually defaulting to showing you images from your feed in a grid view. And so the question for you is if you were, you know, in charge of this and thinking about making this decision, how would you think about this? What would you look at? What would be the key considerations? Yeah, no, that's a, that's an interesting take. Um, I guess the first question that, you know, I have in my mind. It's like, I know that Instagram similar to Facebook, it's about connecting people and, and, and bringing people closer together. I think in Instagram's case, it's about, you know, helping you find and discover things that you love. Yep. So, you know, the question I would have is, you know, what was the main hypothesis or, you know, what was the objective of this particular product consideration? You know, was it to increase engagement? Was it to increase the number of views? You know, what, is there any idea of like what the top level goal is for this particular uh, consideration? Yeah, good question. So the initial hypothesis was, hey, if we default to showing more images in a grid when the user first opens the app, they'll have, you know, they'll quickly see a, a bigger range of, uh, of content that's been posted. And by seeing a larger range, it's more likely to draw them in and get them to, you know, scroll and engage with everything that happens to be on Instagram at the moment. Got it. Interesting. I think that then if that's the case and if that's the hypothesis, I think that there's actually, and you know, when we think about Facebook, there's actually two sides, right? There are the people that create the posts and then there's people that view the posts. And the reason why I mentioned that is that, you know, we're probably focusing on people that view the post because that's where the most dramatic change is going to be. But one thing we should keep in mind as we're doing this is if this affects any of the engagement, so they might view things, they might view more things, but if they start to engage less with each, like in total with the photos, that actually might provide less motivation and feedback to the creators that could actually potentially, maybe something for us to look into is the overall creates of listings and posts. And so yes. that's just something, again, you know, I'm not going to, focus on that right now because I think that's you know a secondary effect but I just want to kind of call out that you know it's a two-sided marketplace uh, and we just have to make sure that you know the downstream impacts that the video experience uh, might have some impacts on on the posting experience as well or the posters yeah no so, I think that's a fair point to make yeah so if you were to focus then on this this viewing experience I think the, the way that you know I would look at it is you know what are some of the key metrics that Instagram considers when they're looking at, um, you know, uh, the home screen, you know, what are, they, what are they expecting? And so, I, you know, I would just kind of like walk through, what's the user experience of you viewing it? So I think the first thing is, you know, how many people open the app, you know, yep. how many people, you know, how long do you stay on that home page? So the duration of time that you're, you're viewing that page. Yep. I second, I think the second thing is, you know, what, uh, how many photos do you view, right? Um, as a proxy of, you know, how many, how much content do you like? Yep. I think the second thing is, or the third thing is the engagement. So how many photos are you, you know, liking or commenting or sending to, mm. or sharing to your other friends? Yeah. Um, sharing actually might be slightly different than engagement, but like, you know, kind of the, um, the, the referral or share type of experience. And then, I think that I'm trying to think what else might be interesting. So I've talked about, you know, the visits, the, um, the duration, the engagement, 
uh, that also includes comments, the sharing, and hmm. I think then, you know, overall, you might also want to take one step back is like, well, once they view this experience, you know, are they more likely to come back? So basically retention mm -hmm. and daily yeah. actives, right? Just kind of like that top line metric is also going to be really important as well. Um, so those are the types of metrics I would, would look at. Yeah. And, you know, I think that if I had to pick one that's going to be the most important for us to evaluate, you know, it's going to be, does this uh, uh, have a better daily active user, right? Because right? that's like the top line, right? If, if this experience doesn't, is actually decreasing daily active users, mm. then, then, you know, that's, uh, that's a problem. That's definitely something <laughs> that we need to address right from the, from the get go. Yeah. But I suspect that, you know, the daily active users is probably not going to change that much. And so I think it's probably going to be a lower metric that is going to be more informative of whether we should launch this or not. Um, and so I guess, you know, I'm just going to pause there because I'm making some assumptions here. Like, yeah. what do you think? Do you think that that's fair or do you think or do you have some input on what you think might change and, and you know, how we should yeah, how, how I might think about that? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think completely agree on the top line that like at the end of the day like daily active users is critical and so if that starts tanking like obviously that's that's hugely problematic that will have downstream effects on on the entire business and and revenue um i think you know you, you sort of talk through the funnel which i think is important i i think one of the things i think about this with this type of functionality and this type of change is it does feel like you might pump up some metrics by doing this while having a negative impact on other metrics. And the question yeah. is, which, which ones are the right ones to, to move up and which ones are the right, ones, right ones to sacrifice? So for example, like if I told you, hey, you know, there has been an experiment run on this um, and you know, based off the sort of metrics that you were talking about, like duration on page, number of photos viewed um, and engagement, um, what we're what we're generally seeing, what was found in the experiment is that the average number of photos viewed in a session by a particular user, so average number of photos per session per user is up a little bit, um, like it's up like three or four um, percent, but engagement per photo, uh, like average engagement in terms of likes and comments uh, is down like 10 to 15 percent, depending on some of the variants that have been done. Um, so at a high level, I would be curious sort of, you know, if if those were the some of the key metrics you were thinking about, what does that sort of tell you or what are your hypotheses about, hypotheses about what might be going on there? Yeah, so let's first talk about the hypotheses and why this is happening. And then let's talk about what's the more important metric and things that we probably investigate to determine, you know, which, whether this is a positive or negative thing for Facebook yeah. overall. I think the hypothesis is that because you're showing more photos on a single view, you know, each photo has less real estate. And so it's less in potentially less engaging or, you know, less um, attractive. Yeah. I think the second thing is some of the CTAs, like the like button, the send button and, and the heart, you know, all those things are much more, you can it almost be too much if you showed it on each single photo. So I'm assuming that, you know, it's maybe a little bit more hidden where you need to tap into the photo first. And so maybe it's like a two-step process to actually yeah. drive the engagement. So that's probably another reason. And I think the third thing that is probably also is that, I don't know about you, but there's a little bit of social proof happening when I look at the photo. So if I see a photo and it has like a 10,000 likes, I might just like, without even thinking, like, like it. And be like, <laughs> oh yeah, this is cool. Uh, but it has lower, you know, there's a little bit of like, oh, like, I don't know if this is, is um, interesting. And then the, the other thing on top of that, so you don't get the number of likes, but you also don't get the comments, right? Sometimes I will see a funny comment yeah. and I'll like, you know, maybe post it or share that comment. And now that's not going to be visible because again, it's like nine photos instead of one. Um, that being said, you know, you know, there, you know, I, I could be seeing more things that I like and therefore I see more photos and you can you know, almost imagine too, there might be higher ad load, like more monetization opportunities because mm. again, I'm seeing more, more photos, so, you know, yeah. monetization might actually be up. Um, but like you said, engagement is down. So 
I think engagement is down is, is really concerning. Um, and the reason why is that engagement is one of these metrics that has a reinforcing cycle. So when I engage with a platform, I'm actually creating a bit of content mm. um, for other people to engage with, like a comment or even a like is something that encourages other people to like. Mm. And then, as I mentioned, there's a downstream effect. If I don't engage a particular content, the creator is not going to get the social gratification and feedback that they need to continue posting and, and, and interacting. And so, you know, if I had to hypothesize, if engagement was down, but views were up, um, you know, that actually might lead to uh, multiple ecosystem impacts over time. You know, one, less people will start engaging with content overall. So it's gonna kind of reinforce. The second thing is creators are gonna start posting less, which means that there's less content to engage with. And so yeah. I would actually expect that, you know, you might not see this experiment play out within the two week time frame um, of how it might impact daily actors because at first there's some no novelty effects, you know, people are seeing more content, but over time, I think you would probably see lower daily actors um, and, you know, some of the leading uh, indicators might be, you know, lower posts. Yeah. Um, from from other people as well. Got it. So it, it sounds like maybe what you're saying is, well, let me ask you this: like, if if you were sort of put in charge and you said, okay, like here, you know, the state of the this experiment is what we were just talking about. Um, how would you think about proceeding? Like, do you want to just ramp it up? Do you want to kill it completely? Or is there like a third path where you just watch this a little bit longer to sort of gauge how things play out? Yeah, I, I think it this point, you know, I would probably see if there's any historical evidence of my hypothesis where when as engagement drops relative to views, how that impacts daily actors. So which one's more correlated number of views, number of photos viewed in the session or engagement mm -hmm. in terms of daily actives. I think that's one way that could, you know, help provide me some confidence. And let's say that that's true. Let's say that engagement is, a, I think both of them are probably correlated with daily actives, but let's say engagement is more. I think the question before we kill it is like, is there another use case within the app that having more views than engagement is actually more valuable, hmm. right? And so, you know, if you were to think about Instagram, then I think there's a couple of different views within it. You know, there's obviously the explore view that already uses the grid view. Um, but what if the search view was also grid, grid like, um, you know, what if, you know, you could try different people's profiles where I already know Kenton and I'm not really trying to see all his photos at once. I just want to get, 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 get a quick glance of who he is. And so, you know, I might want to use it there or, you know, there's times where I'm trying to double tap into a shop and I want to see all the products really quickly. Yeah. Um, or, you know, when I want to look at a location, I want to see all their photos and food really quickly. Like, I think there's other opportunities where having this grid view might actually be more effective and we can maybe experiment and, and start to see, you know, when does it make sense for people to get a quick glance of things so that they can get the information they need and, and engagement is not really the most important thing. The most important thing is utility. Um, and so that's probably a direction that I might look into experimenting with. Got it. Okay. Cool.